some of them. Uh, I was talking about baptism today, and as I did in the previous couple uh, messages, we're talking about how some people argue, oh, you got to be baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. you got to be baptized in the name of Jesus. And the scripture says, whoever blasphemes against the Holy Ghost, there's no forgiveness of sin. Okay, so, um, you know, because a lot of churches argue over this. But there were some people that were baptized in the Bible just in John's baptism. And that was just repentance. Because John, John the Baptist told him, the one that comes after me, he's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost. And he said, "He it is he that I'm not even worthy to untie his sandal. You know, so. And that was, he was talking about the Messiah, the Most High. El Elyon, all right? So, there's some people who baptize the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Then there's some baptized in the name of Jesus Christ later on in the Bible. And Paul asked them, you know, have you received the Holy Ghost since you first believed? And we covered this in my last couple of messages. Just go back to them. And um, the people said, we haven't heard of such thing as the Holy Ghost because they didn't know. All they knew was John's baptism. So he baptized them in the name of Jesus and then he laid hands on them and they received the Holy Ghost. So it's all in the scriptures, but people a lot of times debate and argue and, and really don't go through the scriptures scriptures and break it down. Now, there were some people that was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ already, and, the, and they didn't have the Holy Ghost. So, you know, it's time you have to tarry for it. As I said in the other messages back in the day, the church mothers, the bishop, the elder, the deacons, they would all get around at the evangelists, and they would tarry with you. You know, right in the church sometime until you received the Holy Ghost. I mean, it was it was powerful. You know what I mean? And we discussed, I pulled out the scriptures how David, they looked through the window and saw David leaping and praising God. You know what I mean? Way back then in the Old Testament. Just out of joy. Even though the people didn't receive, the really receive the Holy Ghost until the New Testament when Christ ascended. And then he sent down the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. Okay. That's a lot. It's powerful. It's real. It's in the Bible. Um, but today we're just talking about baptism and how we we find one here that Nicodemus who didn't believe. This may be a two-parter, so we'll see. Let's start it off with the Gospel of John, chapter three. Gospel of John, chapter three. There was a man, and before I start, I just want to say this. You know, if you don't know the Messiah and part of your sins, you just repent. A lot of people say, like, I don't know how to pray. I don't know what to say. You know how to conversate. You know how to text. You know how to Instagram. You know how to all these things people do, uh, email and everything else. You know, email is not really talking, but some people, you know, use voice, the text and all that. But you conversate. You get on the phone, do this, and the Messiah knows everything. So you just talk to him. But the main thing is repenting, and the Father and the Son will come make their abode with you. And you just say, you know, I repent of all the sins, the things that I've, I've, I've wronged you for. I know it wasn't right. Please forgive me. I repent of my sins. Make me a new creature. All these things. And he will get in a good church that loves you, that doesn't just love your money, that's going by the scriptures out of the spirit and truth, that are worshiping in spirit and truth and not in entertainment. You know, of course, we need the things that praise the most high, the music and the singing and all that. And as we discussed, people did dance. Because some people like, oh, they be phony. They don't even really be. No, the Holy Ghost is real. People do speak new tongues, not the same old tongues, Eli Bosha, but speak new tongues. And people praise. And as I was saying in the previous messages, you got to go back to the previous messages. Some people sit on the side. Oh, they must be going through something. That's why they praising. No, it's not always that. A lot of times it's Psalms chapter 150. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. We're praising some churches, they don't pray. They just, ooh, you know, some kind of stuff when the Messiah desires your praise. You know what I mean? If I had 10,000 tongues, I couldn't praise you enough. You know what I mean? He inhabits the praises of his people. So many scriptures about praise and worship. All right, now let's get back. Sometimes I have to take the people back to bring them up to where I am. So this is not, it won't seem like, where is he? Okay, I'm in, I'm in the scriptures, John chapter 3. This might wind up being a two-parter. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered, 
Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So here's a question. People, you got to be born again. You got to be baptized. Let's read on. John chapter 3, verse 3. John answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter in the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So Nicodemus is saying, how, how can a man be born again? He, can he climb up into his mom's womb if he's an old man and get born all over? And this is, this is, this is what all these baptism things are, are about. So John 3, 5, And Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. And that's why when people die, their flesh goes into the dirt. The Messiah only wants the spirit. And there's another scripture that talks about marriage. There is no marriage in heaven. Okay, we're just angels worshiping the Lord. That's another scripture. Sometimes people think they're going to be married in heaven and be walking around. I'm going to find me a Boaz and all this. No, it's not going to happen, okay? We are the angels and we're worshiping the Messiah. Holy, holy, holy. Hallelujah. You know, so that's where that's going to be, okay? And he is the groom and the church is the bride. And he's going to, you know. So anyway, I'm down to verse 7. And let's do 6 again. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. I'm in John chapter 3, verse 7. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. No marvel that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but cannot tell whence it cometh, and whether it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the spirit. And when you had the Holy Ghost, people be always trying to figure you out. Oh, he's churchy. He's religious. And all. Don't even know you. You know what I'm saying? As they used to say back in the day, don't know you from a can of paint. You know what I mean? And then they can't figure you out. And as our last message, I talked about analytical people that are sensual versus people that are really spiritual. And we read the scriptures in the Bible that says those that are, are sensual and that they don't have the spirit, they're of the devil. That's what the Bible said. I read it out of the Bible. Got to go back to the message sensual versus spiritual. Okay, but I want to bring us back to where we are. John 3, verse 8. No, let's go to 9. I read 8. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we know, and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. If I had told you earthly things, and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And that's what happens to the unbelievers. You tell them of heavenly things, and they don't believe you. Well, the Bible's tampered with, and I, you know. Yeah, this book's missing, but there's the, the meat is here. And no man have ascended. I, that, that just hit me. That's a message. The meat is here. I'm going to bring that, you know, the meat of the word. Because the scripture said, once you get a full age, you become the meat of the word. You're no longer in the milk of the word. You're no longer a babe. John chapter 3, verse 13. And no man have ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven. Even the Son of Man, which is in heaven, and that's the Messiah. That's how you get the Father, the Son, who is the Word. And then you get the Holy Ghost. When he ascended back up, he gave, he, he breathed the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. That's how you get the Trinity. But these other false doctrines talking about how can the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost be one and all that. It's explained in the Bible. The sad part is somebody will say that in the street, and then people start saying, thinking it in the street. It can't, that's impossible. You know, and, that, and they're blaspheming. That's why the Bible, you know, in ignorance. And the Bible says, he that blasphemes against the Holy Ghost, there's no ignorance. So, I mean, there's no forgiveness. So, don't walk in ignorance. You know what I mean? He that blasphemes against the Holy Ghost, there is no forgiveness. So don't walk in ignorance, you know. Okay. Uh, John three fourteen. And Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. Even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. And you know, as, and as Moses was lifted up, you know, that whosoever that he's talking about going to the cross, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Yeah, we get into your favorite scripture, John three fifteen. Now verse sixteen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, that's, that's awesome, and that's true. Now, when you go to Hebrews, the first chapter, it says, and the worlds were framed. Because sometimes when you try to explain to people off of Revelation chapter 2, verse 9, and Revelation chapter 3, verse 9, go look at it before, before you place your argument. Revelation chapter 2, verse 9. 
Revelation chapter 3, verse 9. Titus 1.14. Revelation 1.14. People think that, oh, he just loves everybody. No, didn't the, doesn't the Bible say he hates evil? Doesn't the Bible say, Jacob I love, Esau I hate it? Okay, so Jacob is Israel. You read that, you got to go all the way back. That Jacob's name was changed to Israel. He had Israel had 12 sons. These are the 12 sons of Israel or 12 tribes of Israel that were scattered. It's not the 12 tribes of Esau. Okay, so we did, we discussed who Israel it really is, who Esau really is. We discussed, well, look, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. You know, that's the lineage of King David, Solomon, the, the Messiah himself, okay? And he said he has a people, you know? My, well, speaking of perish, my people perish for lack of knowledge. They destroy for lack of knowledge. If my people would humble themselves, if my people would choose this day, whom ye shall serve. I mean, there's so many my people, so it doesn't mean necessarily my Christians, it means his people. That's why he said to the Jew first and to the Gentile. And some people argue, what well, is the scripture says? It's ne neither Greek nor Gentile, nor barbarian, nor Scythian, for all are one in Christ. Right. That's true. But this is the deal. That you got to remember the true Jews, you know what I mean, not Jewish, the true Israelites, they were scattered, as it says in James, the first chapter, around the earth. And when and some of those that were from Jerusalem, they kind of had some pride, like we're from Jerusalem, and they was like not messing with the Jews that were scattered through all kind of things. Slavery, we read that in Deuteronomy 28 with the blessings and curses. We went on down to 28, verse 64 to 68. It talks about being brought over here on slave, uh, slave ships. We know who that was. We don't have to try to figure out historically who was that that was in chains and beaten, shackled. And pick cotton and all that. He has a people. Revelation chapter 1 verse 14 shows what he looks like. Okay. It doesn't have that long stringy hair. Walking on a grass hill with some sheep and a staff behind him. You know. Flames of fire. Hair like wool. Feet like burnt brass. Okay. Not trying to make a thing about it. Discriminative. Just making a thing that he has a people. That's what I'm saying. Okay. And they, those people were kicked out of the land. As in Jeremiah chapter 16 says, they were taken from Egypt to the land of the north. Okay? That's here. Okay? And the, the minor prophets and major prophets talk about how we're going to one day be back in our land, which is Israel. Why were we kicked out of the land? Because we didn't keep his laws, his statutes, and commandments, just like today. We still got people, they, they'd rather be everything but the true people of the Messiah. And why? Because they listen to other people too much and they refuse to read. I remember with slaves, they weren't even allowed to read. You know what I mean? Because they didn't want them to come to the truth. So they put a bunch of pictures and stuff up to fake out the people and fake out the minds of who the Messiah really was. I'm sorry for going there, but you know, tell the truth, shame the devil. Because the Messiah is the truth, the way, and the life. I'm, let's go to 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 21. 1 Peter 3, 21. And it reads, the like figure whereunto even baptism doth also now save us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So in that particular passage, 1 John 3, 21, it's saying, you know, it's not, it's saying here that the like figure, we back on baptism, even baptism does not also save, does does now it does now also save us baptism saves because you're baptized into his death that's that's the whole confirmation that you you you're dying in with the lord but it says not the putting away of the filth of the flesh but the answer of god uh, the answer of a good conscience toward god that's why when you're baptized you repent when you have been baptized it, it, it touches your conscience to repent it's not the flesh thing the water that you get in a bath it's 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 that's why it represents the water represents the spirit Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 5. I'm going to prove that. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6. This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. But there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. And there, and, and there are three that bear witness in earth, the Spirit, and the water and the blood and these three agree in one okay that was first john not john first john chapter five verses uh five six seven and eight so it tells you 
And that's why when he was pierced in the side, what came out of him? Water. All right, shalom. Go and follow these scriptures.